business and owner are not one and the same they are two different entities whenever a owner starts a business organization he always aim at long term whenever we are going to record each and every transaction in the books of account so it should have a proper documentary evidence in the form of vouchers so in other words the business and its owner are to be treated as two separate entities Hello everyone I am Harshita lecturer department of commerce vidyashram first grade college the temple of excellence mysore my dear students today we are in the seventh session of unit 1 of the subject financial accounting 1 and this is for first sem bcom student and the unit 1 is all about introduction to financial accounting so in a previous session we have discussed about theory base of accounting so let us quickly recall what we have discussed in a previous session so in a previous session i have covered this topic that is we have learned certain basic terms which are used in accounting next we have learnt about theory base of accounting that is why the theory is essential in accounting so we call it as accounting is a science because it contains theoretical aspects or it is a body of knowledge which contains all the theoretical aspect where how we have to record the transaction and how the financial statement has to be presented to the users next we have learnt about accounting principle so what is this accounting principle is all about next we have learnt about the important topic that is gap generally accepted accounting principles so what does it contains next we have learnt about kinds of accounting principles where in today's session we are going to learn one of the important kind of accounting principle that is accounting concepts so we have learnt what are the two types of accounting principle that is accounting concepts and accounting conventions in today's session in detail we shall learn about all the accounting concepts now coming to the accounting concepts so what is this accounting concepts so it refers to the necessary assumptions so these accounting concepts are called as what assumptions and ideas which are fundamental to accounting practice so what are the assumptions that are made in accounting in order to bring that accounting into the practical one so that assumptions is called as what accounting concepts so accounting concepts is a assumptions or ideas on accounting where the actual accounting is come into practice so that assumptions or ideas on accounting is called as accounting concepts so let us see what are the various types of accounting concepts here that is basic accounting concepts so the first one is business entity concept so we are going to discuss about all these concept in detail one by one so what each and every concepts tells in accounting so the first one is business entity concept second one is money measurement concept and the third one is going concern concept fourth one is accounting period concept and the fifth one is cost concept and the sixth one is dual aspect concept or it is also called as accounting equation concept and the next one is revenue recognition concept or realization concept and the next one is matching concept and the next one is accrual concept and the last one is objectivity concept so these are the important accounting concepts so let us see each and every point in detail so what are each and every concepts tells us about so coming to the first one is that is business entity concept so before going through this explanation i'll give an example here so now this is a business so if you see the picture here now this is a business and this is a owner so now this concept tells that business and owner are not one and the same so they are two separate entities so the business is different at the same time owner is different they are not one and the same now whatever the amount which is invested by the owner into the business then it is business amount so it is a capital of the business which is invested by the owner in the same way whatever the profit which is earned in the organization it belongs to the organization it is not that of owner's profit okay so it is organization's profit in the same way if the owner is in need of money he can withdraw some amount of money 
for his personal use but on the condition that it has to be written back to the organization so what we call it as we call it as drawings so here the amount which is withdrawn by the owner for his personal use it is called as drawings so this concept says that business and owner are not one and the same they are two different entities so the capital which is invested by the owner so for that also the organization has to pay in the form of interest what we call it as interest on capital in the same way if the owner is in need of money he can't take the amount as per his wish so he has to withdraw the amount and it has to be written back to the organization because it is organization's amount in the same way whatever the profit which is earned in the organization so it may be the struggle of the owner but that profit belongs to the organization not for the owner so here business and owner are not one and the same they are two different entities so it means in accounting every business undertaking is regarded as a separate unit or entity quite distinct from the owners who own it so as i have already told you this business entity concept says that business and owner are not one and the same they are two different entities so in other words the business and its owner are to be treated as two separate entities so they are two separate entity not one and the same example in proprietary concern the business is different from its owner so the accounting records are made in the books of account from the point of view of business unit so whenever they are going to maintain the books of accounts of the organization here the accounting is not maintained as per the requirement of the owner so it is organization's transaction so business transaction will be separately recorded in the accounting and the results of the business is confined only to the organization not that of the owner so therefore when owner brings capital or makes drawings they are entered in the books of accounts of the business so it's not that the owner so even though he is a owner of the business he can take the amount as per his wish so it is organization's amount so there are certain rules and regulations to be followed while withdrawing or while investing amount to the business because this concept says that business and owner are not one and the same they are two different entities now coming to the second one that is money measurement concept now what is this money measurement concept here the word itself says that so all the transactions that are recorded in the books of account that has to be measured in terms of money so it means that only those transaction which can be expressed in terms of money that is in terms of monetary transactions such as sale of goods for cash payment of salary etc are to be recorded in the books of account so we cannot record all the transaction in the books of account we will record only those transaction which can be measured in terms of money or in terms of monetary units now if you see the example here cash payment so cash payment or the payment of salary so they are all measured in terms of money now a salary of rupees 30000 is given to an employee so that rupees 30000 which is measured in terms of money so only such type of transactions will be recorded in the books of account transactions which cannot be expressed for example we cannot express in terms of money relating to the effectiveness of the employee or efficiency of an employee correct so those transactions are not recorded in the books of account so we will record only those transactions that can be measured in terms of money so which cannot be expressed in monetary terms such as appointment so appointment of an employee or appointment of an worker of course it affects the profitability of the business and it is a very important activity that have taken place in the business but still we cannot those transaction or still we cannot record those transactions because it is not measured in terms of money so or a retirement of an accountant etc are not recorded in the books of account thus according to this concept transactions are recorded not in the physical units but in monetary unit so this you have to remember here so this concept says that 
the transactions which are which are there in the physical units cannot be recorded in the books of account only monetary unit transactions or that can be measured in terms of money or monetary unit only such transactions can be recorded now coming to the third concept that is going concern concept now this concept tells that many people come and go but the organization will continue for a longer period of time so here a employee may resign from the organization or employee may be appointed in an organization so it does not affect about the life lifetime of an organization so it will continue people may come and go but the organization will continue for a longer period of time so whenever a proprietor or whenever a owner starts a business organization he always aim at long term so his main intention is to see through that the organization will sustain in the market for a longer period of time so it does he doesn't want the business organization to close in a earlier stage so his intention is to continue for a longer period of time and thereby this entity tells that or this concept tells that in accounting a business firm is regarded as a going concern in the sense it keeps on going or it will continue for a longer period of time and there are number of people who come and go so the ceo may change or the president may change or the vice president of an organization might change but the business will not affect so it will keep on continuing or if the organization suppose if an effective employee or effective manager have resigned from the organization so that resignation will not stop the organization so it will continue for a longer period of time so in other words according to this concept a business enterprise will continue to operate for a fairly longer period of time so it always aim for the longer continuation of the business activity so this concept provides the very basis for showing the value of the assets in the balance sheet with proper classification of fixed assets and current asset so this going concern so if you want to prove this going concern of course in the balance sheet in the asset side we are going to show non current asset as well as current asset so why we are showing this non current asset in the sense the business is there for a longer period of time where the initial investment of fixed asset is made because thinking that the organization will continue for a longer period of time so that is going concern concept next one is accounting period concept so normally the duration of the financial statement from where we are going to prepare or from where we start preparing the financial statement and where we end the transactions in order to prepare the financial statement so that duration is called as what accounting period concept so it means for measuring the financial result so whatever the duration which is been taken in order to measure the financial results in an organization so that duration so it may be 6 months or it may be 1 year so that duration is called as what accounting period concept so for measuring the financial results of a business financial statements are prepared for the financial period or accounting period which is normally a year so normally for an year we are going to prepare the financial statement so that duration of one year or duration of six month is comes under accounting period concept so example calendar year that is from 1st january 2016 to 31st december 2016 so this is a calendar year and if you come about the financial year so it starts from 1st april 2016 and ends on 31st march 2017 or any other financial year so here normally the financial year starts from 1st april and ends on 31st march so in our country the companies act 2013 and the income tax act required that the income statement should be prepared annually so these companies act 2013 and income tax act tells that the financial statement has to be prepared annually that is for an year we are going to prepare the financial statement so that is known as accounting period concept next fifth one is cost concept or historical cost concepts now let us see what is this cost concept so here while considering in accounting we are not going to take only the purchase price of a particular asset 
So, it includes all other expenses until that asset is been used, until the asset is been ready to use. So, till then whatever the expenses which are included, so everything are considered under cost concept. So, cost concept means that an asset that is a fixed asset. So, for example, we shall take a machinery. So, fixed asset acquired by a concern is recorded in the books of account at its cost or purchase price at the time of acquisition. So, here whatever the cost which is incurred to acquire that asset until it is ready to use. So, the total expenses are included under cost concept. So, the cost price includes cost of acquisition that is cost of purchasing an asset, transportation, installation and making the asset ready to use. So, it is not just that. For example, if the purchasing price of an asset is rupees 10 lakh. So, this is cost of acquisition plus we have transportation of rupees 10,000. Again, installation rupees 5000. So, all these expenses are gathered together and this comes under cost concept. It is not just that only 10 lakh is included under cost concept. So, all other expenses which are included until the asset is ready to use. So, whatever the expenses which are included, everything comes under cost concept. So, in subsequent years, it should appear at its cost price less depreciation return of to date. Of course, as and when the time passes, the value of fixed asset goes on decreasing, which we call it as depreciation. So, year after year, we have to charge the depreciation for a particular asset. The market price of the asset is ignored. So, we are going to ignore the market price. So, we are going to consider the cost price of an asset and thereby we have to charge the depreciation year after year because as the time passes, the value of an asset goes on decreasing. Next one is dual aspect concept or accounting equation concept. So, we all know about the accounting equation. So, which tells that assets is equal to liability plus capital. Now, what does this dual aspect concept tells us that for each and every debit, there should be a corresponding credit in the sense for each and every debit, suppose if the debit is rupees 10,000, so the same 10,000 should be credit also. One is taking effect, other one is giving effect. So that comes under dual aspect concept. That is every business transaction always results in receiving of some benefit of same value and giving of some benefit of equal value. So, there is an equal chance of receiving at the same time equal chance of giving. For example, if I purchase a machinery worth rupees 10,000, so I get the machinery. So, it is a receiving aspect where I get rupees 10,000 worth machinery. At the same time, I pay cash rupees 10,000. So, there is a receiving aspect as well as a giving aspect. So, this dual aspect concept tells that, so there should be a equal benefit. One is some benefit of giving and some benefit of taking. So, that is recorded under dual aspect concept. Example, when a business concern sell rupees 1000 worth goods for cash, what happens then? 1000 worth goods is going out of the business. At the same time, 1000 worth cash is coming into the business. So, one is giving aspect, other one is taking aspect. It receives cash of rupees 1000 and gives goods worth rupees 1000. So, there is a equal debit as well as equal credit. Thus, every business organization involves two aspects of equal value. So, there is a equal value of two aspects. One is giving aspect as well as taking aspect. Dual aspect concept means every transaction has a dual or two aspect and should be recorded in the two places. So, dual means what? Two. So, and the accounting equation is assets is equal to liability plus capital. So, this is a accounting equation where the total of liability and capital should be equal to total of assets. So, dual aspect is a basic principle of accounting. It provides a basis for recording the business transaction in the books of account. In fact, this concept 
forms the core of double entry system of accounting. So why it is called as a double entry system of accounting? Because it is a complete system of accounting where we are going to record or where the total of debit should be equal to total of credit. We are going to record both the aspect one is taking as well as giving aspect. The duality principle is commonly expressed in terms of fundamental accounting equation which is as follows. So our accounting equation we know assets is equal to liability plus capital. So if we reverse this equation, so if you want the liability then the equation is asset minus capital or if you want the capital then asset minus liabilities. So this is all about dual or accounting equation concept. Next one is a revenue recognition concept or realization concept. Let us see what is this revenue recognition or realization concept. So the concept of revenue recognition requires that the revenue from the business transaction should be included in the accounting records only when it is realized. So it is that so we can't record all the transaction as and when it has been taken place. So we will record the transaction when it is actually realized. So revenue recognition concept is that we are going to record the transaction when it is actually realized. Not when we are actually going to receive or when we are going to actually pay. So when it is actually realized on that particular date we are going to record the transaction. And revenue is to be recognized or considered to be realized only when goods or services are transferred to the customer and the customer becomes legally liable to pay for them. So we are going to transfer the goods. So when we are going to take into consideration when we have actually transferred the goods and the owner of that particular goods is legally liable for the ownership. Then only on that particular date we are going to record the transaction. Example credit sales are treated as revenue or income on the day when sales are made. So when the sales is actually made on that day we are going to record the transaction. It's not just when we are actually going to receive the amount. So suppose if the sales have happened on 1st September. Okay, so this is a credit sales. So this is a credit sales, but we are going to receive the amount on 10th September. Then this revenue recognition concept is that we will record the transaction when the transaction have actually taken place. It's not that when we are actually going to receive. So this we are not going to record. We will take the transaction when it is actually occurred not when actually we are going to receive the payment. So credit sales are treated as revenue on the day when sales are made and not when the amount is received from the buyer. So we are not going to take into consideration when we are going to receive the amount. So we will record when the transaction have taken place where the purchaser have legally liable for the ownership. Then only on that particular day, we are going to record the transaction. Next one is matching concept. So here the word itself tells that we have to match something here. That is matching concept. So it means to measure the profit or loss of the business for an accounting period. So if you are going to take an accounting period that is financial year. So in order to measure the profit or loss, all the expenses incurred should be matched or deducted from with the revenue. So here all the expenses has to be matched with the revenue or income earned during the accounting period. So in order to ascertain the profit or loss of a particular financial period, so what we have to do? We have to see all the expenses that is being matched with all the income in that particular accounting period. So thus according to matching concept, all revenue earned during the accounting year whether received during that year or not or and all the cost incurred whether paid during that year or not should be matched properly. So here the total revenue has to be matched with total income whether it is actually received or actually paid but we have to match in that particular accounting period. So taken into account while ascertaining the profit or loss for that particular year. So this is about matching concept.
Next one is accrual concept. So it means that revenue accrues in the year in which they are earned and not in the year in which they are actually received and expenses accrue in the year in which they are incurred. So this concept is similar to revenue recognition concept. So this tells that we are going to record the transaction when it is been actually occurred. It's not that suppose if you take about the revenue or the income. So we are going to take into transact or we are going to take into account when the revenue has been actually incurred and not when we are actually going to receive that revenue. In the same way in terms of expenses also. We are going to record the transaction when the expenses have actually occurred and not when we are actually going to pay for it. So that is nothing but what accrual concept. So accrual concept tells that we are going to record the income and expenses when it has been actually occurred and not when we are going to actually pay or actually receive the amount. So this is a ninth concept. Now coming to the last concept that is 10th concept, objectivity concept. So we have already know about the OCHAS. So what do you mean by OCHAS? So it is a legal evidence or it is a documentary evidence which act as a proof while recording each and every transaction. So this objectivity concept tells that we cannot record the transaction as per our wish. So whenever we are going to record each and every transaction in the books of account, so it should have a proper documentary evidence in the form of vouchers. So that evidence is called as or that evidence comes under objectivity concept. So it means that all accounting entries should be based on objective evidence. There should be a proper evidence. So without there is or without any evidence, we cannot record any of the transactions in the books of accounts. So objective evidence that is supported by the verifiable documents such as vouchers, invoice, receipts, cash memo. So these are all termed as what? Vouchers. So whenever I am going to record each and every transaction in the books of account, I should have a proper documentary evidence without which I cannot record any of the transactions. The evidence must be objective that is free from the bias of the accountants or others and must be subject to the verification by the auditors. Now this vouchers it's not only kept while recording the transaction so it has to be preserved carefully. It has to be serially numbered and it has to be preserved carefully until the auditing takes place. Until the auditors goes for auditing so till then so these vouchers or the documentary evidence has to be preserved carefully. So this act as the evidence for recording each and every transaction in the books of account. That is objectivity concept. Now we have completely learned about all the accounting concepts that is from business entity concept to objectivity concept. So in my next session I am going to discuss about accounting conventions. So this is the second type of accounting principle that is accounting conventions and we shall learn about difference between accounting concepts as well as accounting conventions. So these are the topics what I am going to discuss in my next session. So my dear students hope you have understood today's session. See you all in my next session with a new topic. Till then take care. Thank you.